Hey guys, welcome to the Tom Reefer Studio. Real quick before we get into it for new viewers, this is the 20 gallon mixed reef cube. And up top, I'm gonna show you a little bit about that one in a minute. That's the five gallon nano. In the back there is the six gallon tall. And over here, is the 10 gallon peninsula reef and today i'm going to show you the completion of the five gallon nano reef today i'm going to show you how to start a new nano reef i got the live rock i just got from fish guy mike This is 1.025 salinity. Before it is too late to flee. All right, let's put this up on the shelf and start getting it going here. All right, so I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna clean the rocks in there. There's a little hair algae on the side. I'm gonna clean that off a little bubble algae, put it in the new tank, and then get the new tank up on the new shelf that I built. Here it is. Everything is flush. I recess the screws so they don't pop up. This is gonna be this way, and this is oak. This is a piece of oak, so it'll keep the tank from warping. I'm gonna reinforce the two ledges that hold it. For you builders, I have two ledgers on the side here that are gonna hold 50 pounds. That's what we're talking about with this tank. Maybe, yeah, around 50 pounds. want to do is add a little bit more to the same water back in just to keep the corals covered. The Duncan and the hammer were exposed so I might be in another 20 or 30 minutes before I get those all in there. So I'm going to put a little more water back in. All right guys so what I brought in was the it's about four gallons of fresh water, but I put the live rock from Fish Guy Mike's. And I put the live sand I got from Fish Guy Mike's. Down inside here. So you can see, I cleaned this all out with fresh salt water last night until it's completely clean. But new guys the bacteria culture is still on this i'm going to dump some of this water into here i don't know what i'm going to do just watch i'm going to dump some water out of here out of here into this big container so i'm not using all this water up to clean the algae and stuff off that other rock once i start cleaning this in here i probably won't use it but I have another five gallons ready to go in the other room. I'm gonna dump. This water in here I would use again because I only poured a little bit out. So I'll probably use some of this to put in the five gallon. <laughs> you new guys are probably completely lost, but in editing, I'll somehow try to make it make sense. If you were starting a new tank, you'd do the same thing, you'd mix up fresh salt water, you're gonna put your live rock in, you're gonna put your water in, and then you're gonna gently put your sand in, and you're done, and plug things in, but keep watching. My hands are wet. Okay, so I have about a gallon and a half of water in here. This is now gonna be anything that I need to clean off is gonna be in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the rock out with everything on it right now, except the snail, we don't want him to come out. Now, oh. Remember when I cemented everything together? Look how much easier this is. I'm cleaning off the hair algae, the bubble algae. All right, you're not gonna be able 
to see it. Maybe if I hold it here. Sponges are these things, guys. Those are all sponges. They're good to have. Here's my Zoza. I see some bubble algae. Try to get that off. All right, so I'm going to put this in here. Kind of like where it was. I just want it stable. All right, this is the rock I cut. It's like an island rock, so I can kind of stick that in there. And then I'll put the sand in maybe on the on this end here in the toward the front. All right, so this is the old water from the 3.5 going back in. I'm not going to put it all in because I need to lift it. All right, this is the mat, guys. That's going to be centered. There we go. Now I got to put this in. That's close enough, guys. You guys that worry a lot, you're gonna find out if this is strong enough to hold the weight. Here we go. If that whole tank comes down, I'll have to show you what happened. Geez, that would be a disaster. I hope this is strong enough. It's gonna hold. It's got three screws. It'll hold. go downstairs below the people that live below me oh my god probably crash into my 20 gallon and bust that up holy <laughs> shit. it's only 50 pounds look i can almost lift it up all right it'll be fine it'll be fine guys All right, so we filled the tank up and let me show you what it looks like inside here now. All right, so here's the overflow. As you saw before, I cut holes in the side to allow the water to flow over. And what I've done here is I put some, just some filter floss in there. And that collects any of the detritus that flows over into this compartment. Next to it is the ATO Micro, and that's for my auto top-off. That's another video. I have those for you beginners. You can see how that works. And down below, I have the Cche Synchra Nano Pump. And I believe that's going to be perfect for this size. If you look at it from this angle, you can see where I've placed the rock structure, guys. You don't want things right up against the glass. You want to allow flow around the entire rock structure. And what you definitely want to avoid is stacking it up against the back of your glass. If you notice the live sand in here, I didn't do a deep sand bed. I've lately come to realize that it's not necessary. It becomes a nutrient sink over time because of uneaten food, fish poop. If you want to have a sand bed, it's fine, but you will need to vacuum your sand bed periodically, maybe once a month, maybe more as your tank gets really established. So I put about an inch in some spots, maybe a little less, and I've tapered it off. And if you'll notice here, I also put some from the 20 gallon. You can see the texture is a little different. I neglected to show you how I put the live sand in. So I'm showing you here when I did it in the 10 gallon peninsula. You put the plastic bag upside down, down in the water. You allow some of the water to seep in from the bottom and you gently pull the bag up and this allows the least amount of sand cloud in your tank. 
So there it is, guys. Let me put the lid on and then we'll talk about the light. All right, here's the Kessel A80, guys. I find this to be a great light for this size aquarium. Very decent quality. It's a $120 light. These are the settings. On the left side, that controls the color. That means it'll give it more blue light or less blue light, more yellow light. And then the knob on the right is the intensity. So the higher it goes, the more light is going into your tank. So as you can see, my color is at one o'clock and my intensity is at about 11. So that's the setting I use for this light on this tank. So there it is guys, the five gallon nano reef. And what you can do is sit back in your chair and just enjoy your reef tank. You can do it guys, new viewers and beginners, it's really easy. You can do it. Remember when I cemented everything together? Look how much easier this is, guys. So, ah, 